Okay, dear friends, uh, before we begin this sharing, let us spend a moment of silence in prayer. Lord, let this sharing of our brothers be a moment of grace to us all who listen. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the second episode of our webinar, A Calling. What's it like being a Jesuit? Dear fathers and brothers, here I am, Scholastic Simon, your host for today's session. Before we begin this vocational sharing, I would like to introduce to you our four speakers for today's sharing. Father James Karapura, Father Basil Sangha, Father Sunny Thomas, and Father Alex Roy. Father James Kalapura belonged to the Jamshedpur province. He joined the society on 2nd January 1972 and was ordained on 25th April 1985, making this year very special for him as he celebrated his 50th year of being in the Society of Jesus as a Jesuit. He was engaged in pastoral ministry in Purulia, West Bengal for five years, and he started a new mission in Jilin, West Bengal, where he worked among the group of people called Sabo, the poorest and the most exploited group in the district. He served there for 10 years, where he also started a Bengali medium school and a hostel. After that, he was appointed the provincial of Jamshedpur province in 2002. Having completed his tenure as a provincial, he volunteered himself to go to Afghanistan and work there for two years. In 2011, he came back to the province and was appointed the superior of the Jesuit community, the Novelist School in Jamshedpur. In 2015, he was appointed associate to the Novice Master, and then in 2017, he took over as a Novice Master. At present, he is, a, he is in Gudera Jesuit resident, Jamshedpur province, infirmary and home for the age as the coordinator, minister, and the infirmary of the infirmary community of Jamshedpur province. Our second speaker, Father Basil Sangha, too belong to the Jamshedpur province. In 2014, he completed his philosophy in Pune and then sent for regency in the candidate house, Chai Basa Jahkan, followed by his second year of regency at Human Life Center Bhubaneswar. He was in Rome at the Gregorian University for his theological studies. He was ordained on 29 December 2019. At present, he serves as a candidate director in the Gonivers Chai Basa in Jharkhand. In the second part of our session, we are going to listen to our Jesuit brothers from Kerala province. Father Sunny Thomas of the Kerala province serves as the rector and manager of Loyola Institution Trivandrum. He served as a he served as a pre novice director and novice master for 12 years in Kerala. Then he was appointed the associate to the provincial for a period of six years. He completed his post graduation in counseling psychology from Sarana Institute. Lunafla in Maharashtra, and he is trained in family counseling, Ignatian spirituality, yoga, and Indian spirituality from Manila. Along with the given responsibility, he is actively engaged in psycho spiritual ministry. And the fourth speaker, Father Alex Roy of the Kerala province, currently serves as the principal of Loyola School, CBSC, Trivandrum in Kerala. And as we have heard about our first speaker, now let us uh, watch a video which will display a glimpse of the Jamshedpur province. I therefore request Brother Joshua to play it for all of us.
Hello, dear fathers uh, and brothers. The moderator for uh, today's session oh, is Dr. Sasha. Yeah. Okay, start, start. The, it's is uh, yeah. not music. So, uh, dear fathers, the moderator for today's session is. Father Xavier Carmel, a vibrant and energetic Jesuit. He did his Bachelor of Divinity and MA in Christianity and Interreligious Relation at Heathrow College, London. He also earned his PhD on Ryman Panikas Theology of Religious Pluralism from the University of Birmingham, UK. Right now, he's a vocation promoter of the Jesuit of the Society of Jesus in Kerala and serving at the Samiksha Jesuit community as its superior. So far as they will, over to you. Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you very much for uh, giving this opportunity uh, to moderate this uh, session. Let me uh, call upon Father James Kalapura to share the first moments of uh, your vocation and also uh, your uh, the attraction to the society, what was the reason. And there are so many aspects in the, in the vocation uh, story. So, Father James, you are welcome. So, is not coming. Good evening. Good evening. My vocation history starts with uh, my birth. I was when I was born, I was not alone. I had a companion, my twin brother. And uh, since my grandmother was already already dead. My grand auntie, my grandfather's sister, came to look after my mother and us, the twin brothers. After our baptism, one day my grand auntie took both of us in her hands and uh, she said, pointing to me, Chako Chen, that was my name, my baptismal name was Chako James. And he said that Chakochil will become a diocesan priest. And then she took a Thomas and Thomas and said, Thomas would become a CMI priest. Probably she knew only two uh, groups of people, the diocesan priest and the CMIs. As a school student, I was interested in becoming a priest. My parish priests were my models. And I used to read a lot about uh, the missionaries in the North from a number of magazines, Catholic magazines. And so my desire was to go to North India, become a missionary, a diocese and priest, because I used to read a lot about the Dyson priests working in different parts of North India. But uh, after my 10th class, when I told my father, I want to join a seminary which would help me to go to the North. She said, no, you are too young to make a decision for yourself. And so you do your college studies. So I was sent for my PDC, three degree course. And then after the PDC, I was still not very sure where to go. 
So my parish priest told me, go to Pali Mission Home. You can consult the Monsignor there, Father Jacob Weldringart, and he will guide you. In way you want to go to North India, and he is touch with many North Indian missions, so he will help you. So I went to Pali Mission Home. I started my studies there. I studied uh, for around six, uh, four, five months, Latin. And then I wanted to go home. I was not that happy with what was happening there. So I went to Monsignor and I told him, I would like to go home. From there, I will contact people and I will decide where to go. Then he said, uh, go to, uh, you know, the Novena of St. Francis Xavier is coming. We'll start very soon. And so you wait till the feast of St. Francis Xavier, attend the Novena and pray to him to guide you. So I went back to my companions and I told them, this is what happened. And uh, my companions told me, do you want to go home after the feast of Francis Xavier? Well, the only way that we can do is go and tell him on the 4th of December that you would become a Jesuit. He had asked me, what would you like, where would you like to go? And I have told that I would like to go to Jamshedpur because my companion in the mission home was also for Jamshedpur province. But I don't want to join Jesuit. Though they told me much about uh, uh, Jesuits, I came to know much about Jesuits in the mission home. It's all about uh, institutions, schools, colleges. And uh, my basic interest was to be a pastor, to be a dice, to be a pious priest. And so, anyway, on the 4th of now, uh, December, I went to Father uh, Jacob Weldringart. I told him I would like to go home. And he asked me, did you make a uh, did you make any plan, any decision about your life? I told him I would do a jump ship for Jesuit. And he said, very good. You can go home now and you can write for Megole, the vocation promoter, and he will guide you. I also would write to him recommending you. And that is, that is the way I came to Jamshukpur province. I did not know much about Jesuit, but I thank Monsignor for guiding me to choose the Jesuit. And from that time onwards, my journey, 50 years in the society has been a journey of fulfillment. I received missions as parish priests. I was in the missions looking after poor people. And that is exactly what I wanted. When I came to the North, to be a missionary, going around, reaching out to people, loving them, serving them. And I got immense uh, opportunities to be with poor people. I was always available for the society and I always remained grateful to the, to the society for the opportunities I received from the society. The society trusted me and I trusted God. There were times when I was not prepared for the mission that was given to me, but I believed in God's providence and I put myself in the hands of God and I told him, here I am to do your will. I will do my best and you will you do the rest. And so, so far, things have worked very well for me and I am happy, I am grateful to the society and to my companions my, who always supported me and for the, for the uh, wonderful, wonderful way 
the society guided me. Thank you. Thank you, Father Jos, for your inspiring and uh, you know wonderful way of uh, explaining how the Lord, uh, uh, you know, ha He has been leading you from the birth, as uh, Isaiah would say. So thank you very much, and uh, let's uh, go and listen to Father Sunny Thomas. He is there. Father Sunny, can you hear me? Over to you. Father Sunny, yeah. Audible? Is uh, here? Am I audible? Now audible, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Am I audible? You are audible. Can you audible. hear, can you yeah. hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Uh, dear friends, dear friends, I am on my way to the north of Kerala to attend a funeral or the father of one of my Jesuits. So therefore, I am sitting audible. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm actually, I was in a restaurant to attend the meeting, but there is music. So therefore I am sitting outside, okay? I would like to share with you. Hello, Father Sunny. I think he has got some problem with range. Uh, shall we, shall we go to Father Basil? Father Basil, can you share now? You are welcome. Yes, I'm ready. Over to you, Father. Thank you. So straight away, uh, I would begin. Uh, my vocation story is not very extraordinary. It is very simple. Uh, as a small kid, uh, I used to see the Jesuits going to the mass center and uh, offering mass. And that used to be uh, twice a month or once a month. Or we used to go to the parish and then attend masses and uh, there was a spark within to become a priest but I didn't have any clarity uh, whether to join a diocese or to become a religious. Uh, so that went on till I finished my matriculation and then later on I uh, came to know about the vocation camp and uh, I went to Jamshedpur and it was my first time like, you know, coming out of my small town there and small place and attending the vocation camp and uh, then later on I joined the candidate house so uh, this is how I came to uh, came in contact with the Jesuits and uh, one thing I remember about uh, one of the uh, catechists saying like, you know, okay where do you want to join the Jesuits or the diocese then uh, he strongly said, go to the Jesuits. And that is how he recommended. And then uh, that carried on. And uh, I uh, went on in my formation. Um, and uh, today I am here. And uh, when I see so many things happened in my life in, in past uh, many years. Um, when I look back and uh, three things which I could point out which uh, strengthened my vocation was my companionship or the companionship with others. And uh, we had always lots of sharing, either it was uh, with my own companions or the seniors or the juniors uh, that always accompan accompanied me and uh, helped me carry forward in my vocation. Uh, then I experienced the trust from uh, the authorities and uh, I never had the experience of like senior and junior, but they always considered me as uh, their friend and always guided me. And uh, that was a very good companionship, which allowed me. And uh, I always trusted them and as they trusted me. 
and the trust which they put in me was very tremendous and i felt within myself satisfied and i felt that okay i am at the right place uh, these are the few things which always uh, keep me going and uh, i always feel grateful towards uh, uh, the members in the society and at the same time my uh, companions own companions and the authorities always encouraged me to go forward uh, the biggest challenge i would say is uh, as we talk about uh, more and more and the magic and uh, there was always uh, a feeling of discomfort and uneasiness like going to the new place means how would that new place and how would i cope up with but whenever i went to the new place something happened automatically by itself and uh, i always used to uh, say to myself okay god has carried me till here and he will carry me forward too and uh, that kept me uh, uh, like you no know, strengthened and that gave me power and uh, things went on happening and i still uh, carry forward that trust that always god is there and uh, there were some experiences uh, the authority is telling me something and uh, i felt that okay god's hand was there and uh, the authorities were in the place of god and they always guided me and so far i feel that yes this is the life uh which i chose and i feel satisfied and happy so this is my uh, life journey in the society i have spent uh, only few years here and uh, very young in the society and i keep trust in the lord and the authorities and uh, pray that uh, all we <coughs> all together grow trusting in god thank you thank you very much father basil thank you and uh, now over to father roy alex uh you are not audible roy alex can you hear me now yeah yeah okay so good evening fathers and brothers uh my vocation story begins with a big no so after my 10th standard examination one of my teachers who was a nun asked me roy why don't you join the seminary diocesan seminary she also reminded me that you were an altar boy and you must join i told her bluntly i don't like to be a seminar then i joined for 10th standard and after completing the 10th standard also i never thought of joining the seminary my father got transfer and we shifted to a new house and new place i joined one of the colleges in kannur district in kerala and completely immersed in the college politics i started thinking about uh, becoming a political leader and found joy in what i was doing but things did not evolve as i expected some of you might know about the politics in kannur district in kerala it is more about animosity towards your opposite party members and always clash rivalries and so on i was afraid to go to colleges due to the threat uh why did i join the politics so why did i start to work in the student political parties because i wanted to serve the people eventually i realized that it would be very difficult for me to continue in the politics and what to do now and i was having a lot of reflection and here comes the question again why don't you join the seminary to serve the people but i was not sure and contacted the sister again who told me that you have a vocation she told me again that you can join the seminary but a diocesan seminary but uh, 
I was not interested in joining the dietitian seminary because I saw the dietitian seminary in, in uniform and I did not want to wear the white shirts and black pants always and so on. So I discussed it with my with uh, some of my friends. And one of my friends who attended a workshop at Christ to All, our Tronchal House, told me that you could join Jesuit Seminary. Because he told, he told me that he could see a group of simple priests in Christ to All. They were very simple and very progressive in thinking. And they could also relate with the people very freely. So I think it's because of this simple living. And when I heard that simplicity, uh, simple lifestyle, OK, I got attracted to the society. Yes, I did not experience the simplicity of Jesuits before joining the society. But I could experience this simplicity in my first encounter with the Jesuit father, Dominic Marathaniel, who was my vocation promoter. The way he interacted with me and also with my family members was truly amazing. I also had the privilege to live with so many other Jesuits who followed this simple lifestyle. Especially, I remember Peter Gallagher in the UK, a person, very pious and simple priest who is ready to celebrate three masses on Sunday. And in the same evening, he would prepare food for the community. So many other simple uh, Jesuits uh, I experienced in my life. So the other area give me a sense of fulfillment, the companionship. Wherever you are, wherever you are going, you are welcomed as a Jesuit. I had the privilege uh, of living in a Jesuit community at San Sebastian, Spain. Five of us uh, got, uh, you know, we, we went to that community and we did not know one word in Spanish and they also did not know anything in English. We had to live there for five days, but we really enjoyed the companionship. We could not exchange anything because we had the problem in language, but the Google Translator helped us in communicating, but we simply enjoyed the companionship. Wherever you go, you are welcomed. So that's what I really cherish in the community, in, in the society of Jesus. The simplicity, the companionship, and also the freedom that you are given, freedom with responsibility. So the challenge that I face, face in the society might be being a real Jesuit. I have some role models in the society. They constantly challenge me. So that's a challenge I always face in my life. Thank you. Thank you, Father Royal X. Thank you very much, uh, dear fathers and brothers. We have Father Sunny Thomas with us. Father Sunny, can you share with us? Uh, I am able to speak. Um, can you listen to me? Can you hear me? Very audible, Father. Continue. Very audible. Uh, yeah. But then camera may not be on. Okay. Uh, I got a trouble with my phone and then I'm using my companion's phone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, the, ro the root of my vocation, uh, what has passed me in my vocation, there is no particular event or instance that I could, uh, uh, I could pinpoint. But I would say my family background. Uh, I was born in a very, very traditional Catholic family. Uh, in a very much a, a Catholic locality where priests and the religious were respected very, very high. And that whenever a priest or religious came to my home, I remember my parents would make it a big celebration. And I, as a young boy, you know, a small child, I always realized that, you know, priests and religious are honored very much at home and in the parish. So therefore, it's a, the attraction towards priesthood began in that family atmosphere. But then the ideas changed along with my studies in the colleges. Uh, and then I, I would say 
my family my family is the root of my vocation what attracted me to the jesuits that's another question that i would like to reflect i studied in a jesuit school and i found the jesuit priests quite different from the the clerical the clerics around the place their relationship with the people is a very very unassuming a uh, very very cordial relationship with the students and to the people um, around the school i noticed that there there are there are different type you know once i remember my headmaster one mc father mc joseph took took the whole class to the ground and asked us to look around and we saw lots of trees and plants and birds all around and then he would ask you know where is god we would say god is we are confused he would say god is here god is in all the creatures and a rudimentary mysticism of the society was uh, yeah was uh, already taught in the school as a boy i could not understand anything also i remember another instance you know we were taken to the colony a, a poor people's colony nearby where we were asked to interact with the, the poor people over there and then uh, that also you know the the priest also accompanied us the priest also accompanied us and um, that also another thing you know how jesus was connected to the poor people how they were um, reaching out to the poor people these two things you know that attracted me to the to the jesuit society later after my college education i thought of joining the society these were the two things that attracted me actually and uh, what is the fulfillment i receive in the in the society one thing i would say the ignatian spirituality the ignatian mysticism i was interested in in prayer and meditation sir. and ignatian mysticism you know which embraces the whole world that oneness experience that has always been something a fulfilling even now i regularly meditate i teach meditation to people you know, to various groups and that gives me lots of uh, kind of you know self um, self fulfillment actually and the society is a larger vision the vision for the whole world especially our uap and all you know and when i converse to people you know we always communicate this larger vision to the people so i am very happy that i am not limited to a local church but i am a person of the global citizen that global vision and commitment is another way of fulfilling me that society gives me lots of freedom you know freedom to to engage in my own creative way to the ministries i am i am involved in this kind of uh, um, the freedom for creativity initiative and availability that also gives me lots of uh, satisfaction in my life in the society and finally what would be the kind of uh, challenges i am facing in the society maybe as all of us experience you know um we too maybe i'm also very much uh, connected to the the internet to the social media like whatsapp and facebook and but then i am very much aware of this attraction and the, the amount of time i am spending with electronic media but i am very very careful with it and then i am also trying to recover from that kind of a certain kind of addiction like that another one um, like many of us you know i too would like to receive the praise and glory of the god maybe popular seeking popularity i am very well aware how do i overcome these uh, these kind of tendencies i i have my ignatian tradition of a uh, uh, meditation mysticism my personal prayer life and i engage in lots of reading every day i spend some time for some personal reading and studies and then my my energetic lively creative commitment in all the areas the the the, uh, the mission that is uh, that i am assigned to this is my vocation story and my commitment in the society thank you friends thank you god bless thank you, thank you father sunny for this uh, wonderful sharing dear friends now we have a i think in the context of uh, ignatian year shall we have a, a word about the uh, spiritual exercises so if you can uh, pinpoint one or two points of your experience doing 30 day retreat 
during the uh, novitiate or the tertianship and so on to be nice. I understand that Father Roy has not done the tertianship, but uh, what is his uh, what experience? So any anyone can share just one or two points. I think Father Joseph has got uh, something to say. I had two long retreats during the novitiate. I don't remember much about it, but my relationship uh, long retreat was quite wonderful. Under the guidance of Father Rex Pai, I made a wonderful retreat. I had a very good God experience. And then that also helped me to be giving long retreats to my novices. I never had a training in uh, Ignatian spirituality. I was never prepared for novitiate, uh, for my, I mean, so novice master's job. But I was all of a sudden pushed into that uh, job. And uh, I was quite happy to give the long retreat to the novices, to see them growing in spirituality. And for me personally, the public life of Jesus was the most important thing because I always looked at Jesus as a pastoral man, a man who was concerned about uh, the poor, the downtrodden, the sick. And uh, every time I gave a long retreat to the students, I always, the novices, I always talked about this wonderful aspect of the pastoral care of the people. That's what most attracted me. And uh, uh, <coughs> going through the spiritual exercises along with the novices, I have once again experienced the fullness of life, the fullness of spirituality. And uh, I have grown much in the Ignatian spirituality because of my interaction with the novices especially during the long retreat time. For me personally, the life of Jesus, which I contemplated during the long retreat was the best experience for me. Thank you, Father Jos, Father Basil and Father Roy. If you have something to share about the long retreat experience or uh, Jesuit spirituality, also fine in general. Uh, one of the experiences what I remember uh, in the long retreat was like allowing myself to be led and uh, that has worked a lot uh, at times it happens like uh, there is a resistance or I hold myself uh, not allowing myself to free but once I free myself everything is taken care of. that was the uh, freeing myself or the experience of freedom and uh, being free in the spirit. That was one of the most uh, beautiful experiences I had uh, during the long retreat. And uh, uh, this has helped me in my life also. And uh, being free and allowing God to work uh, within me and allowing him to lead me. And that uh, rich experience I still carry with me. Thank you. Thank you, Father Basil. Father Roy? Yeah, I did my long retreat along with the Father Saviour because we are companions. And I remember that I thought that it would be very difficult because, uh, you know, uh, I was uh, very talkative and it would be very difficult for me to uh, sit uh, for a long time in prayer and so on. But I experienced that, uh, that God was working in me and God, God worked in me and God gave me the grace to complete and to experience uh, his intervention in my life. That was my experience. It's, it, was not, it was not because of my uh, capability that I could do it well. It's because of God's providence I could do it well. Thank you, Father Roy. Now, dear fathers and brothers, we have a 
uh, time to ask some questions and clarifications to these. Of course, Father uh, Sunny has, uh, after sharing his, uh, he started again his uh, travel to Vainat. So we have three people here. You are welcome to ask for any clarifications or any questions. You can unmute yourself and then, then ask the question or clarification. Yeah, Newton, you can ask question. Over to you. You are muted. Yeah, now. You're muted. Um, uh, yes, good evening, fathers. And uh, well, uh, this is Scholastic Newton from Bangladesh. Uh, I belong to Calcutta province. Uh, my humble questions to the fathers that. How was your uh, young life, like as a scholastic, when you were doing your uh, college studies, graduations, philosophy, or higher education? As a scholastic, as a scholastic, how did you uh, face the challenges that a young person may face in various kind of, uh, I did not say temptation, but the challenges. How would you deal with that? And how did you uh, manage your vocation? Um, please enlighten me. Thank you so much, Father. You want to answer the question or uh, one more question from Richard Pindo. Is there any time that you felt discouragement and uh, felt leaving the society. It's a question from Richard Pinto. So the two questions, you're welcome to answer the questions and clarifications, fathers. Okay, I would, uh, I would answer the first question. Uh, this is about uh, uh, as a stick, uh, the challenge uh, there were many challenges and uh, always as I shared in the beginning uh, during my sharing, the companionship, I had good companions. But the basic, you are uh, muted. Un unmute and speak, sir. Just unmute. Hello? Audible, audible, yeah. In those moments uh, during my scholastic <coughs> days, uh, I had lots of sharing with my own companions, uh, whoever was in the formation stage with me or during our summer vacation. So we used to come together and share and uh, find our time. And I used to share with them and uh, allow myself to be free. And I used to listen to my own friends and whatever they said, I listened to them and I got a lots of uh, a lot of support from them and the guidance too. And the other support was from my spiritual fathers. And uh, I really trusted them and I really got help from them and uh, my authorities also. And these are like my companions and my authorities, my spiritual fathers. They had really guided me well uh, as uh, a scholastic uh, in those challenging moments. And uh, helped my vocation to be like, you know, carried on and always. And um, the second uh, question was uh, like, you know, leaving the society and all. So I, I never had that kind of uh, 
experience within me and uh, um, so i didn't have any such uh, experience thank you thank you father basil and uh, we have a sp uh, question specifically to father roy father roy did you get any threatening after joining the society since you were active in students politics no no i i never experienced any threatening Elsa. Father Jos, you want to you want to add anything? It's a muted. Ah, yeah. All right. Talking about my scholastic days, I had an ordinary time in the college or philosophy or theology. But my best experience was during my regency. I was in charge of uh, around 265 hostel kids. All of a sudden, I, from a kind of a child, asking for permissions from everyone, I was given a lot of responsibility, and I became an elder brother to the uh, senior boys and a daddy to the small little ones. They used to call me daddy. And, uh, I am still in contact with, the, it's more than, uh, you know, 1980, 78 to 80, I was, uh, did my regency. Even today, I have practically 200 of them in touch with me. And uh, some of them still call me bro. And uh, that companionship, that the kind of relationship that we built up with them, I built up with them, is still very precious to me. Some of them have become grandfathers. And they are there. And there I grew from a child to a responsible, mature person. And uh, so this is an experience that I always cherish, being with my hostlers. Dear ones, very loving ones, they still remember me, that's great for me. So dear fathers, uh, thank you very much for your wonderful uh, sharings and uh, also you know, inspiring all of us to, you know, grow in our vocation, Society of Jesus, and also to promote more uh, Jesuits like you. And uh, now, according to the timing, it's uh, it's uh, the time to give a word of thanks. Over to the organizers. Yeah, may I now request uh, Brother Richard to propose a word of thanks. Yes. Am I audible to you? Very clear. Yes, Richard. So it's a great joy to be here on this episode, second episode of Calling What is to be a Jesuit. So here am I, scholastic Richard Pinto, to propose a word of thanks. It's a, there is a saying, the unful heart, unthankful heart discovers no mercies, but thankful heart will find in every hour some heavenly blessing. Yes, it's time to recall all the goodness that happened at this second episode of calling what is to be a Jesuit. First and foremost, grateful the Almighty for all the blessings, keeping our internet steady so that we could hear everyone. Okay, there are some uh, here and there, some uh, internet disconnectivity was there, but I felt there was a flow. Secondly, we heard from Father James Kalapura. He had a lot of experience being, being a provincial and worked in Afghanistan, and we heard his occasion story. So, Father James Kalapra, a big thank you for sharing your occasion story, inspiring us young scholastics you know, to be uh, strong in our occasion. And secondly, Father Basil Sangha, for your young and energetic, you're still very young, as you said, and your face also looks very young to us. So thank you for sharing with us your vocation story. And Father Sunny Thomas, 
from Kerala province and for your wonderful experience and sharing with us your story and your inspiration with us i'm think i'm sure you are not here you already left but thank you for your time and being with us and fourthly for the alex roy again from kerala province for your sharing we are really inspired how your occasion story how you got the occasion in spite of being very active in students politics but you still joined this with and still you are very strong so that is really great and thank you for your uh, time and availability and sharing your all thoughts joys and happiness with us and we are grateful to our moderator father xavier taramel and presently is occasion promoter of kerala province your young and energetic ideas surely help the many young minds to join the society of jesus in the province of kerala and to the entire society of jesus and special thanks i saw our provincial of jamshedpur province father jerry being present here and uh, i don't know our guru for the ep matthew i think is is in busy, busy schedule but we are grateful to you to your provincials for your availability for your encouragement because your constant support helps us a lot to go ahead in life and special thanks for the joshi from xim being the moderator and animator of digital jesuits you are always available and you are a great support to us jesuit uh, digital jesuits for continuing our ministry and my special and loving thanks to uh, master of the ceremony scholastic simon da is presently doing his second year of philosophy at satyanilayam thank you simon for your wonderful uh, master of ceremony and special thanks to scholastic joshua is uh, presently is a uh, a uh, coordinator of digital jesuits in spite of his busy schedule is acting is giving his best giving his time to continue the uh, good work of the society of jesus and at last thank you one and all for your precious time for being with us and uh, listening to the uh, to various our uh, senior jesuits their occasion story and thank you for participating i'm sure you will you'll be there in our third episode next episode that is a calling what is to be being jesuits so thank you one and all so we'll see you next in next episode so thank you one and all have a great night so see you sometimes later thank you thank, thank you, you and congratulations and here we come to the conclusion of our uh, webinar so dear forest thank you and have pleasant evening you are welcome to have uh, supper with us you are most welcome vegetarian supper <laughs> so we can have online 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 supper <laughs> we will order with the tom uh, what is that is tomato tomato <laughs> zomato and swiggy yeah okay. okay thank you for a good night Okay father thank Josh you, father, father thank you everyone yeah uh, thank you yeah. good night thank you